Hello friends, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator, another tutorial that we are going to put an aircraft to test and this time we are with the 747 as I told after the Boeing 787 tutorial with the heavy division mod. This time we are using the Salty Simulation 747 mod, I am using the development version, the links to the mod could be found in the video description if you want to use it for yourself and we are going to put this to test like we did with the 787 we are currently at San Martin uh, in the Caribbean I thought this could be a great place to be where everywhere else in the northern hemisphere is uh, experiencing winter conditions and I wanted to do this flight in a place that is a little bit warmer than what we have here in United States. Anyway, as you see, we are in KLM colors. Uh, we are flying the Flying Dutchman. And this is a real world flight. I'm not sure if KLM operates with 747s anymore, uh, but the flight number is KLM 730. I, in real life, have flown this flight back in 2010 from Amsterdam to Caribbean but this time we are in the return flight from Caribbean to Amsterdam anyway enough talking I guess uh, we will jump into the cockpit and start powering this aircraft uh, by the way I am using a custom scenery for Sam Martin I think you can find it in the marketplace it's a beautiful air airport uh, scenery and I want to have this because I have been there in real life so Actually, we just stopped here. Uh, we went from San Martin to Aruba. Uh, that was our final destination. Anyway, let's jump into the cockpit. Oops, wrong button again. I keep doing the same thing, but this side view is also gorgeous, I guess. Uh, we have our baggage loaded. Our catering truck is loading our um, food for the flight, and we will just jump into the cockpit if I can find the correct button there we go and start powering the aircraft I will go a little bit more detailed uh, I have seen tutorials about this aircraft but they were a little bit high level if you will so I'd like to explain things a little bit more so that you know what aircraft is doing and why it is doing what it is doing okay anyway First things first, we have external power, we'll go to the overhead. Very important, standby power selection, a knob, you have to move this to auto. If it's at off, uh, when you turn off the external power or when you leave the gate, aircraft loses all its power, even if you have APU running. This knob selects, uh, selects the power source. So auto is the way to go you can choose to bet and then get back to auto if you want to do that until you run the or start the APU but I like to keep it at auto the other thing battery switch is under here under this guard I have a controller mapped to that button so we turn that to on and then the cockpit comes to light uh, life and uh, we need to turn our nav lights to on if i find the correct knob there we go that's the nav lights this tells the ground crews that we have power to the aircraft from here we turn the irs switches to nav for the irs to align and you see here it started aligning um, and we should have a display here with the salty mod showing how much time we got left to align but I'm not seeing it so we'll check it later on uh, after we are done with the uh, overhead panel it's supposed to display here not sure why it's not maybe I just changed my settings under the salty mod um, units we change them to kilograms from pounds I flew in the US last time and under this miscellaneous okay that's not that one this is where you put the co-pilot uh, model uh, and other stuff so IRS not aligned oh 
we don't want to instant align. Oh, I know why it's not aligning. Okay, let me get back. Let me get back. I remembered. I just did things a little bit fast. All right. So, let's go back to off. Okay. So now we need to turn the external power off. Sorry about that. Now we have external power. Uh, and then we will turn the IRS switches to nav and we should see a message displayed here time to align six minutes as you see okay that's what we want from here these are your light switches it's quite bright outside but this is the glare shield which is lighting the MCP that light bar right there this is your dome light and this is the overhead panel which is this panel and it's uh, integral lighting okay so all good we have IRS aligning um, we can turn on our passenger signs that's here so that they seat and buckle up when they are in the cockpit I mean our virtual passenger passengers and we can now go ahead and start programming the FMC okay so I believe it was this shortcut to bring the camera down here we'll go to the init ref you start here right it gives you the active nav database and all that information and from here we go to position initialization as I said we are currently at Princess Juliana in San Martin the IKEA code for this airport is Tango November Charlie Mike so Tango November Charlie Mike, we'll plug this in here. We are at gate 10, if I am not mistaken. And from here, I tried to copy one of these GPS positions. Seems like it is not working. Therefore, we are going to use this one and plug the coordinates in here. So that's our position initialization done. Next up is to do our route. This you have a couple options. You can enter this manually, that's perfectly fine. Or you can request the data from your Simbri Fright Plan if you have done the integration. What you need to do for that is you need to go to the um, oops, you need to go to the salty menu, which is I'm trying to find it. Nope, not that one not that one index no where is that it was here for a split second ago anyway we'll figure this out hold on um, FMC okay no menu there it is sorry a little bit rusty haven't flown 747 a whole lot so under here you have the salty mod uh, page for the mod settings and you see Simbrief here you go in there and you plug in your pilot ID I don't mind sharing mine some people blur this so it's okay for you guys to see it I don't mind and there are a couple other options here you can change your units here IRS align time it's aligning and you can instant align or uh, change this to align instantly if you want to I like to keep it realistic metar source like you see in the working title CRJ or uh, fly-by-wire A320 you can select couple different metar sources like unreal weather if you are using that free mod to inject weather Watson, Pilot Edge, IVAO, or Meteo Blue, which is MF MSFS Live Weather. Traffic Source, you can just uh, use, or TAF Source, IVAOs, or NOAs. I'm using this, this is the default. And ATIS Source, this supports uh, D ATIS, which is, I believe, uh, for digital ADIS that you can uh, request ADIS via message and if you select FAAA you can do that in uh, United States only there is no support in Europe I believe or you can use one of the online um, 
virtual um, ATC networks like Wetsim, Pilotage, or IVAO and request their METAR through the FMC. Alright, so that's that. Let's get back to the menu. D-Link is the ATC stuff and there are not too many options here and I think there is a way to request the data um, in here as you go into let me jump back FMC communications menu and pre-flight you can request ACARS pre-flight uh, if you want to I haven't tested this so don't quote me on that or you can just go to the requests menu and request weather and ATIS like we discussed we can request METAR for this airport and it will be uh, sent as a message and you need to go to the received messages menu to see as you see we have received the METAR information and it doesn't give us anything because our IRS is not aligned yet I believe that is why anyway enough talking about the menus I guess let's request the uh, oh we don't have the flight plan in place that might be the other reason why we didn't see the METAR but let's just make a request to SimBrief it will then download and it says route 1 uplink ready which means you can load the route now because it's waiting for you to press that button to load it or you can purge and make another request if you have to change your flight plan for a re uh, reason it brings the flight number uh, it brings it without the uh, airline code so I'd like to change it to KLM 730 okay that's our flight number and we can load the route and it is loading now you have to give it some time partial route route 1 uplink so looks like it is done as far as I can say you can hit this activate and then execute now we have our route in place but we need to go and check the legs page to make sure we don't have any discontinuities which we will do here in a second this will show you your routing information it has five pages you can cross check this with your Simbri flight plan and most of that is a direct route there are a couple airways in here, but that's how you uh, bring in your route from SimBrief. Performance initialization. This also can be requested from SimBrief, and this will fill out all the fields according to your SimBrief flight plan. So I'm going to tell you guys, SimBrief thinks we will need 78.4 tons of fuel. Okay, and I'm going to check to make sure... I use the metric Unix units because there is a difference as you imagine if it's pounds versus kilograms so let me see yep it is kilograms so 78.4 so let's make a request and see if it will bring the reserves and everything correctly and our reserve fuel as I can tell is 4000 so let's see it requests it is going to send and it is going to show the values okay reserve 7.2 zero fuel weight through fuel 95 not sure where it's coming from because that's not I'm seeing in sim brief oh that's plus the reserve maybe uh, could be so we will accept this and you can play with this uh, in your own time to see how accurately it is bringing it from sim brief but it brings the cost index and everything else uh, correctly from SimBrief. So that's our performance initialization done. We go to the trust limiter page next and we can clean this partial route uplink or all the messages we have there in the scratch pad. So takeoff, this is where you limit or delimit, derate your takeoff. We will do a 10% derated takeoff and we'll see if the VSPs are enough for us to take off from that runway I haven't checked the runway, runway length but we will see the V speeds here in a second so that's selected now and um, this is what I do I don't have a calculator to calculate I just eyeball and see if it will help us to take off from the available runway if not no D rate we will just take off with full power 
So takeoff, this is where you calculate your V speeds. And if you make any changes, this will be wiped off. So before takeoff, make sure you verify this page and make sure your V speeds are in here. Otherwise, you will get a message on the PFD saying no speed reference or something around those lines. We'll take off with flaps 10. Okay, and that's the only information you need to enter. Boeing 747 is usually going to be flaps 10 for takeoff and then we will press these soft uh, keys or line select keys to see our V speeds. We rotate 144, I think that's enough. If you have paid attention to the loading screens of Microsoft Flight Simulator, it says a fully loaded Boeing 747 can take off at 160 knots, so that's within that range, which makes me happy. And next page, we don't have anything other than acceleration height and thrust reduction. What these are is thrust reduction, 1500 feet uh, above the ground level or airport elevation rather. You pull your thrust uh, levers to uh, climb from your toga. Okay, this I will explain when we are taking off. And the acceleration height is 3000 feet. So this is again above ground level, not mean sea level. And at 3000 feet, the aircraft will start accelerating to whatever speed you set for your uh, climb below 10,000. So this is what it does. And this takes you back to thrust, limiters, thrust limit page, which means we are done with the performance calculations. Okay. Fixes are not working yet. We'll go to the legs page to check our flight plan routing. Next, after performance calculations are done and we'll go to the next page and we are looking for any discontinuities or any uh, anything that's not looking right or, and comparing this to our flight plan from Simbrief if you will. So far so good, no discontinuities, no nothing because we haven't selected any departure and arrival yet. Let's do that and come back to the next page. So our departure is I believe a direct departure from runway 10 and yes, we will draw, depart and fly directly to Papa Juliet Mike Waypoint. So no departure to select, no standard instrument departure, uh, in other words. Our arrival, we can do this when we are up in the air, getting close to the top of descent. This is a long flight, guys, and I intentionally selected a long route and wanted this aircraft to be loaded with fuel and passengers to it to its maximum takeoff weight or close to discuss a couple things that will make sense when we see those but for now i'm gonna select the apart the, the arrival the sim arrival that simbrief thinks we should be using but because this is a long haul around eight hours of flight time this might change in real world atc might assign you a different one and that's why it's not wise or it's not going to make any ch sense to select your arrival right now uh, before your departure. So, but for the sake of the tutorial, we will select our arrival. We will be doing an ILS to runway 27. We will be arriving via red for one alpha arrival, this one, and our transition. If you remember my 787 tutorial, uh, I explained how to select the tra transition. In this case, our transition is SUGO. What the transition is, if you have it on the right side, it's your last waypoint in your star, your arrival. If you have transitions here, um, that means how you are going to trans transition into the star from your flat pro plan routing. So that means this side, if you see any transitions, if you have to select one, this is your first waypoint in your star, and this is your last. This is the easiest way to explain this, I guess. And then we will execute this, go back to the legs page, and we will now check to see if there are any discontinuities in our routing. I'm not expecting to have any for the departure because we don't have a star, we did a oh, SID, we haven't selected a standard instrument departure, but we might have some for our arrival. And voila, there you go. We have one here, 
you have two ways of clearing this discontinuity I will uh, show you both you either I need to get this speed break out of the way for a minute you will either select this delete key and delete the discontinuity that's one way of fixing this the other way of fixing it is line selecting the next waypoint after the discontinuity and pasting it over the discontinuity and this will do the same thing whichever you prefer both ways are fine and that's it there are no discontinuities in our flight plan routing and I assume our IRS is now aligned and we can go and check our routing in our flight plan mode using our ND we will change the range to 10 or 20 miles to see it a little bit better and if you look down you will have a step line select key this will step each waypoint one by one and you get to see your routing and I see a problem there as you see there is uh, some weirdness going on we are coming back to O bike after this waypoint that is a little bit bizarre to me so we need to fix that I believe and let's see how we are going to fix it so back to the legs page this will get you back to the flight plan uh, first waypoint and we will try this again yep yeah, and then next one Papa Juliet oh I see now what's going on So if you go to the legs page this is our first waypoint and then for some reason on our next page we have duplicated waypoints looks like it's hard to see but it's coming from this is the problem so if we delete this waypoint this might be a nav data issue let's try to delete this 2753 November and I assume it should fix it and let's just start over and see where it see the waypoints so if you ran into something like this uh, monitor your waypoints using the plan, plan mode to make sure your routing makes sense and your aircraft will not fly around and try to do and there is another one as you see we will go ahead and delete that one too I don't know why these are entered in there it might be a Navigraph Navdata issue that's what I'm using so Microsoft's uh, ARAC cycle that they um, release every month with the updates might not have this so if you are using Navigraph data and following the same flight plan you might run into this too but looks like now it's fixed we deleted two waypoints to remove those back and forth waypoints and now it looks it is okay um, yeah I'm not sure if we should just do this but we will leave it in place and keep going to make sure there are no back and forths and looks like it is doing it is going okay and we are now seeing a green text it's not very visible but that's our top of descent so we will see if it's co calculating correctly to, because that's very close to the airport but we are at a 320 range so that is why it's looking very close and that's our arrival actually we take this route and turn around and land and everything looks okay now so which means we verified our flight plan routing we can get back to the map page next up is to set our MCP our f altitude for the flight or departure and cruise in this case because we don't have a seed and we don't know if there are any restrictions because we are not going to use the ATC I see a step climb for initially to 35,000 feet and then to 39,000 feet so if we will set the altitude to 35,000 first I'm using my controller again to set the altitude but we'll go and set it to 35 and then we will eventually change it to 39,000 the IAS we will just set it to 250 for now that will be our 
speed until we climb to 10,000 and then we will change this and I will explain why I am using this this way and not using Vino I will explain everything and the heading is going to be our runway heading for this runway we are departing runway 10 we will check the airport chart let me just see it very quickly and the heading is 096 so runway heading we will set that to our heading bug 096 to make sure we are on the correct runway and have some sort of backup if something goes south so that's done at this point we'll turn the flight director to on we'll turn the auto trust or we'll arm the auto trust not turn it on next up we need to request metar again and enter our pressure or uh, enter the barometric uh, pressure uh, setting so for that FMC communications again uh, requests weather and we will now request the weather and we should receive now because we see the origin and destination okay okay our car's uplink is in progress and we'll go back receive messages and there we have it metar 1520 Zulu winds are variable at 2 knots few clouds at 2000 temperature is 30 degrees Celsius dew point is 21 degrees Celsius and the QNH is 1018 so we'll go up here come down change our barometric units to hectopascals and what was the QNH 1018 we'll set the QNH to 1018 that is set and you can verify this with the elevation of the airport so airport elevation is I'm gonna check that real quick from the chart 14 feet so we are displaying 20 ish so that is close and yep that is close and we'll, we'll just stay like that we'll change this uh, and set the pressure on the standby altimeter too there we go and what I like to do is just press the B key to verify we are using the correct pressure setting which we are slight difference which is acceptable I guess okay so that is all done we have our flight plan routing entered we have our parametric pressure set we know the meta information we know what the weather looks like uh, MCP is set FMC is set and we'll do a final check go to the menu and start from performance next trust limiter limit and then V speeds all looking good we'll just keep this at the legs page for now and we are pretty much ready for pushback at this point what we will do we will go to the overhead first up we will just um, start the APU we will need that APU bleed to start our engines APU will spool and start running and what we can do is we can call the pushback tag I am using ambitious pilots toolbar pushback you can find this uh, in flightsim.to and the link is in my spreadsheet that I list all the mods that I'm using okay so let's jump outside and make sure we don't have anything here that's connected we still have the catering truck so we will remove the catering truck hopefully he will go away if not it's caused by this setting prevent catering truck from leaving so this sometimes creates issues but now when you turn it off catering truck will start leaving alright power will stay no baggage and we will just remove the jetway because we are ready to uh, leave the gate so let's press that and the jetway will uh, 
retrack and catering track truck is going away and there we go that is the jetway disconnecting speed brakes are there because I mowed the speed brake we were to be able to uh, press the delete button of the FMC that's why you are seeing them like that so I bring it back right now using my controller all right all good now now what we can do is we can call the pushback tag I like this feature I don't know you might find this boring if you are flying often but I like to keep the realism this is ground stand by All right, what it is doing right now is it is connecting to the aircraft. As you see, the tug is driving up to the nose wheel. And when he is connected, he is going to message or uh, communicate uh, back. Just wait a little bit more. And yeah, the animations are not ideal. It looks like the tug's wheels are passing through our nose wheel, but well, you know. As okay, you see, sir, it jumped. The bypass pin is installed. All okay. doors and hatches closed, and all ground equipment is removed. Great. The parking brakes are set. You may lift. So now he's gonna lift parking the aircraft. This the aircraft. is what I like. Look at that. You'll see the nose lifting because he is lifting the nose wheel, and that I don't like those standing animations. But okay, that's okay, guys. So he's standing by for us to tell him that we are ready. Are we? Well, after couple checks, yes, we will be ready. Let's go to the overhead panel. Okay. I will keep this window minimized so that you guys can see a little bit better. So we will turn the tie the buses, right? So bus ties are on. Now we have all the buses tied. Uh, I have a button assigned to my controller to control the, the generators. So for you this might come or this might come as turned on by default. So if that's like that. No worries, that's all good. We'll turn our fuel pumps to on. Just the mains, we don't use the override uh, pumps, just the main pumps to on. And we need our beacon light to be on because we are getting ready to start our engines. All right, everything is set. We will go down here and that's, I believe, seven. On your keyboard, control seven will bring you here. We have to set our transponder code and we will use 1071 as our transponder code. It's at standby. We will turn it to TARA after leaving the gate and taxi. Okay. Seat belts are on and flight deck door is closed. So we are ready to push back. All looking good. Um, and we will start the engines uh, when we start the push back. So let's tell him that we are ready and before we do that let's check where we need to push the tail. So we are departing from runway 10 which is here that means we need to push the tail to the right. Okay. So that's our plan and we'll tell him reverse. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Parking brake set. Okay. Cleared for push start. Please release parking brake. All right, parking brake is parking released. Are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. All right, we will start in the sequence. We'll start with engine number four first, and we will monitor the uh, engines looking for 1.9 N1, and then we will introduce fuel by flipping this switch here. So 1.1, 1 .1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and almost there. There we go. Let's introduce fuel. And I am not a good pushback controller, or I can't just do it right without moving outside and seeing it for myself. But I think it is time to push the tail to the right. So we will do that like so. Yeah, that looks okay. So now our right engine, oh look at that smoke, is that too much? Let's do this. Oh wow, never had this before. I don't know, see that guys? 
Uh, okay, never mind though. It's okay. It's a Microsoft Flight Simulator thing. Okay, don't worry about it. Alright, bleed 4 off. You see that there. These are the engine bleeds. We'll turn it on. So it looks like our engine is now on. And interestingly now, I pushed back right. So, well, we'll just go straight. Like so. And then hold it there. Okay, now we need to start our other engines. You can start two engines at the same time. We'll start go we'll continue with one and two. There is nothing wrong uh, with doing that. You don't have to start them um, one by one. In this aircraft at least, as long as you have enough bleed air coming to the engines. Alright, looking for the same thing, 1.9 and 1. And we'll flip the fuel switches to introduce fuel and you'll see them here turn into green means engine is now receiving fuel okay so far so good we'll turn the bleeds on for engine 1 and 2 and there is only one engine left and we are waiting for the starter switches to uh, turn off automatically after uh, starters are off there you go now let's wait for the engines to stabilize at 23.19 uh, and 1 and one last engine to start is engine number 3 as far as I know this is how you start that's the sequence for 747 4, 1, 2, 3 and that's what I'm following but if you know or heard that it is different please let me know in the comments I'd, I'd like to be I'd like to hear what you know uh, in 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 regards to startup sequence so let's introduce fuel and let's turn on the engine bleed on that is our last engine so we can now tell the tax uh, that we are good and he can disconnect so stop pushback okay pushback completed please set your parking brake parking brake is parking set. Brake set parking brake set lowering aircraft Startup is complete. You may disconnect. All right. Roger. Good engine start. Clear to disconnect. See you at the side. Have a good flight. Holding position, waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. There we go. Great. So Tug will now disconnect and move away from the aircraft, and we are here ready to taxi. Go to the overhead. Let's turn our taxi lights to on. Beacon is on, uh, passenger signs are on, engine bleeds are on, engines are running. We can turn off the APU now, we don't need it. And that's it guys. Everything is now looking right. We will turn the anti-ice system to auto and we'll turn the window heat to on this aircraft will warn you if it's cold outside it is not so we don't have to but if it's cold it will show an orange message here window heat off which means it's expecting you to turn the window heat on okay but aside from that seat belt signs on parking brake set and we don't have anything else to do other than taxiing to the runway taxi lights are on we'll do a quick uh, flight controls check pull forward, center, pull back, center, pull left, center, pull right, center. All looking good. And when you are doing this, actually you are in fact looking to your flight controls. I don't know if they have this uh, here yet that shows you the flight controls page. There are some pages here, electrical, fuel, Uh, flight control there you go okay yeah you then can see the controls moving here while you are checking your flight controls as you see and right rudder center left rudder center all looking good okay you can turn off the screen you can keep it at the fuel page Watch, uh, whichever you prefer this will adjust the brightness of the screens and give you some floodlights over here 
these are the display uh, contrast and brightness switches this, that's the map light I'm sorry that's not the uh, switch and same over here display brightnesses and then the flight light if you want to have some flood light there we're good we are ready to roll before we do we'll turn the weather information here and to turn and see the traffic it's kinda hidden but that is right here in the middle of the range and knob you press that and you'll see traffic displayed here so now the aircraft will display the traffic around us which it started doing as you see here and as I said we'll turn the transponder to TARA and that is about it we'll release the parking brakes good taxi thrust setting for this aircraft is around 33 to 35 M1 so we'll aim for that and we'll be on our way there we go we started moving and you can taxi with two just two engines like the uh, inner engines two and three if you like to I don't know if this is a real play practice in real life I heard a couple airlines uh, instructing their flight crew to use only two engines while taxiing to save some fuel so that might be true all right we are on our way to runway one zero for takeoff guys so this is how you set this aircraft uh, from cold and dark to you know flight ready a um, couple things to check and make sure sorry for the stutters i don't know why they are happening but I started to experience some stutters with Microsoft Flight Simulator after the last uh, update so this is our taxiway to enter runway so we will take this taxi route um, and go there we'll activate LNAV and VNAV and I will explain one thing about VNAV before we take off while we are holding short at the runway threshold which I believe is important and I have never seen anyone uh, creating tutorials with this aircraft explaining this okay so that's something I will show and explain let's just idle the throttles and make sure you are turning slow in this aircraft okay she is a big lady so queen of the skies you need to be a little bit careful and uh, easy with her so she is not the fastest turner and if you are having trouble turning you can just use your inner engines and give them more thrust to make her move and I don't know if this is just related to Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, but yeah I, I, I am really not very happy with the uh, turns in 747 I can manage them they are kind of slow uh, we can do it but it's a little bit uh, different than the other aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator that's what I'm trying to say all right I said at the hold short but we entered the runway so let me just stop here after lining up and explain what I meant but the, by the uh, speeds and all, all that so we are set for 250 right we turn L now we now on after takeoff auto throttle will take off and this screen will go blank okay the reason is when you go down there is a VNAV button here that is going to tell you your VNAV speeds okay speed 263 it is not 250 below 10,000 as you see and you might question like what is happening here the reason is this aircraft is such a heavy aircraft and that calculation is coming with clean flaps so no flaps and the FMC is telling you that I cannot maintain a lift at 250 without flaps so therefore I am setting the speed to 263 and that's what you will see here after takeoff if you want to follow and respect the flight restriction or speed restriction below 10,000 which is 250 then you have to maintain flaps 1 until you reach 10,000 otherwise this aircraft cannot do it 
that's why it's calculating this speed and that's why it will go about 250 when you take off using LNAV and VNAV. VNAV is working but this is something that makes people think that it is not working. In fact it is but it is telling you are heavy and I cannot maintain the lift with 250 without flaps. That's what it is trying to tell you. Okay so keep this in mind guys and we will fix this. We will just do that. We haven't put our flaps down to 10 so we will do that now and we will see if the flaps are now yep coming down flaps 10 is set now very nice and we are ready to roll toga is displayed on the screens there is an aircraft I believe leaving the runway in front of us so let's give him some time to clear and vacate the runway and we will be on our way everything looks okay range is fine we will put the terrain on the ND to see the terrain and one final check for the transponder and everything else all looking good APU is turned off and we will turn our, our landing lights to on and we'll turn our strobe to on as well there we go now we are ready for takeoff let's give some throttle and let them wait for the engines to stabilize brakes are released and let me bring my yoke back forward pressure on the stick a little bit to maintain the nose wheel on the ground until we reach to a certain speed and then we will increase the throttle to go and toga or full throttle at this point and then the auto thrust should take care of the rest all right, still keeping the forward pressure, passing eight in ice nuts, release the pressure on the yoke, maintain the center line. We are coming up to V1. V1. V1 checked, and then rotate. All right, let's lift her gently from the ground. There is a high mountain in front of us, which means we need to be mindful of that one. And brakes are coming and we will make this turn we don't want to hit that mountain okay manual flying right now trying to clear these mountains as fast as I can and looks like we are okay and the flight director is saying you need to pull up but we are good now we can correct our wings and level the aircraft that's a sharp turn by the way guys in a commercial airliner you shouldn't be doing that We'll go flaps 5 now, we are up to that speed and we will turn around to intercept our flight plan routing and we will push the nose down, we are slowing significantly and we passed the thrust reduction altitude, we'll come back on the throttles and at this point what we can do is we can turn the autopilot on and as you see this turn to blank and it is displaying 263 so open that up select a, a selected climb and we will keep the flaps at one. Oh, yep the flaps one as you see the aircraft is telling you that I can't maintain 250 oh it can at this point because it's not that heavy I guess but if you see more than 250 there it is the reason okay so we will do an open climb until 10,000 and aside from that WNAV is working as it's as expected all right there we go I need to get back a little bit for a great view and there is the island of San Martin very good I keep pressing the wrong button sorry about that guys but beautiful view left the Caribbean and we are climbing to our altitude of 10,000 now we are almost there and we don't need the terrain we can switch to weather and now we are ready to activate the VNAV passing 10,000 and it will take care of the speed after that oh 
alright, almost there. 10,000. Landing lights and taxi lights are off now. And we can press this button or knob to go back to VNAV speeds and the aircraft will accelerate to the climb speed of 343 as calculated by the VNAV and it will keep climbing. At this point you don't have to touch the throttles. If you do, just make sure you cycle the auto thrust and the aircraft will then uh, correct itself. Touching the throttle lever if you have a, a throttle quadrant throws this off and you have to cycle uh, the auto throttle disarm and arm and then you'll be good from there. As you see we are climbing nicely, we are on our flight plan route. Um, I haven't checked the transition altitude for this airport but I believe we can go back to standard and keep it like that. That's something I haven't done. I should have checked that prior to takeoff but sorry about that. And the other thing I forgot is the speed brakes again, auto brakes you need to turn them to RTO prior to takeoff guys okay we pass 10,000 we can relieve our passengers and turn the passenger signs to off and we are en route to Amsterdam I think this will be it for this uh, part of the video I don't think this will be a one uh, episode video I will need more time to explain the cruise top of descent and the other stuff it's already 50 minutes long so I think we are going to cut this here I will keep climbing and during cruise only thing you need to do is let me explain that before I cut the video you let the LNAV VNAV control the uh, aircraft with the autopilot and passing 29,000 feet you need to switch to Mach units from indicated airspeed and you do that by pressing this cell or select button and it will switch between indicated airspeed and max speed and that's the only thing you need to do passing, passing 29,000 up until your cruise level at this point I'm gonna set our cruising altitude to 39,000 which is our uh, cruising altitude according to Simbrief and we'll let the aircraft climb to 39,000 alright guys this will be guys this will be it for this episode of the video and in the second episode we will discuss the top of descent, descent, arrival, approach all together at once. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, give a thumbs up. If you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for my future videos. For those of you who are already supporting me and subscribe already subscribed to the channel i appreciate you guys a lot thanks for the continued support and i will be seeing you in the next video